Let's start by discussing the external features, the enclosure, the weight, and the size. The enclosure is made from aluminium, two mil thick sheet um, aluminium, locally fabricated in Brisbane. The aluminium enclosure, we make it out of this as opposed to polycarbonate or plastic to give the battery mechanical strength, which is important we feel, especially when used in uh, vehicles traveling at speed. You want to provide mechanical protection to the cells inside. The aluminium is also an excellent heat conductor and allows heat, any heat generated inside the battery, particularly when drawing 100 amps, um, helps to dissipate the heat. The other feature is the weight. Now this is a 110 amp hour 12 volt battery. It weighs just 12 kilograms. Now when you consider a 100 amp hour AGM, lead acid weighs in excess of 30 kilos. This battery is nearly a third of the weight and provides more amp hour capacity. Now the dotted lines are marked on the table. The blue dotted line demarcates a normal N70 size battery. So you can see that our battery is a smaller footprint than a normal 100 amp hour N70 lead acid. And the red dotted line demarcates the standard battery tray size. So again, you can see the battery fits well within the standard battery tray size as well as well, as well within a normal N70 battery size. So this battery is smaller volume, more amp hour capacity and nearly a third of the weight. Now let's talk about what's inside the enclosure, what you can't see. So inside this aluminium case, there's four cells. Um, the cells are prismatic in shape and there's four of them at 3.2 volts each, 110 amp hour. So when you connect um, four 3.2 volt cells in series, you generate extra voltage. So in this case, it's a multiple of 3.2 volts. So you generate 12.8 volts, hence the 12 volt battery. And the amp hour stays the same because they're in series. So what we have is a 12.8 nominal voltage battery at 110 amp hours. Also what we have is a battery management system which sits under here. The principal job of the BMS is to protect the cells from overcharge and over discharge and to balance the cells, to keep them in balance. In this particular model, because this is our DCS version, we have an internal DC-DC charger which sits under here. In fact, you can see here how you access the DC-DC charger. We'll talk more about this later, but this is a volt sensing relay adjustment. And again, we'll talk about that later. Of course, inside also we have a bunch of cables, what we call a cable harness, which connects the cells, the BMS, to the terminals, the voltmeter, and the three rocker switches. Now let's talk about the features on top of the battery, which you can see on the screen there. We'll start by talking about the top two terminals and the voltmeter and then we'll talk about the DC-DC charger below. So you can see we have a red positive fused and unfused with a 100 amp fuse in between. We have a voltmeter and we have a black negative. So on these terminals, these are M8 terminals, so eight mil diameter terminals. This is where you connect your charge and load to. So if you're charging via a solar panel, you'd connect the positive and negative to here. If you are charging via an AC charger, you'd also connect via there. Your loads also, you connect to these two terminals. The voltmeter, let's turn this on. The red rocker switch is purely a switch for the voltmeter. At the moment, this is measuring 13.3 volts open circuit because we've got nothing connected. The reason we have a rocker switch for the voltmeter is because this draws a tiny amperage, tiny current. So if we were to leave this battery, over time it would discharge because this display is consuming a small current. So if you weren't using the battery for a period of time, you would just simply turn it off. And that means as long as there's no loads or um, charges connected 
and this was off, you would have very, very small self-discharge. Let's turn that back on and let's just cross check and make sure that is measuring correctly. I have a, a multimeter here. I'm just gonna take off the ceramic terminal caps. And I'm gonna place that there. And I'm measuring 13.3, 13.2 volts, which agrees with the display. So that tells me the voltmeter is working correctly. Now if a load is connected, this may well drop by about half a volt and that's normal. So the, the open circuit voltage is always going to be higher than the, than the under load voltage. So let's talk about the fuse. We have an external fuse and that's purely for convenience. Rather than using the BMS, which is inside as the fuse, um, we have an external fuse. So if that blows uh, more than 100 amps, you simply unscrew that, replace the fuse, and away you go again. If that didn't work, then of course we have a secondary protection, which is the BMS inside. But we don't want to go inside if we can help it, so hence we have an external fuse. So they're the two main terminals which you connect your loads and, and, um, and charges to. So let's now talk about the DCS version or the DC-DC charger. We have two models of this battery. The DCS version, which you can see here, which has an internal DC-DC charger, and the non-DCS version. So exactly the same, it just won't have that there. It'll just have the top terminals. So why would you consider purchasing the DCS version? Well, if you have an external DC-DC charger, great. Then you would just buy the non-DCS version and you connect your external DC-DC charger to here. But what if you wanted to incorporate the DC-DC charger inside the battery? In that consideration, you would select this battery. And in that case, you would connect your alternator via your start battery to these two terminals. Now these are slightly smaller terminals to these two. These two are M8 terminals, these two are M6. So assume for a moment this battery is in the back of your four wheel drive or in your RV or a camper trailer. This actually is going into a camper trailer on the weekend. You know, it's sitting three meters behind the engine of the vehicle. So first of all, you have to make sure the cable is appropriately sized between the engine and the battery to ensure you don't have excessive volt drop. So assuming you've got appropriately sized cable, you connect the positive and negative to these two terminals. Now let's talk about the three black rocker switches, what they're for and what they do. First of all, you'll see we have a current 10 amp or 20 amp. This allows to charge the battery at 10 amps or 20 amps. And why is that? Why would you even bother to have the option? Why don't you just charge at 20 amps? Good question. Most cigarette sockets in most vehicles on the dashboard are rated for 10 amps. And in that case, if you're charging via the cigar socket on the dash, you would select the 10 amp charge. If you were had a, a custom um, socket that was 20 amp rated, then you would charge for, from 20 amps. So we put this in just so you can charge from a SIGA socket. Most vehicles are rated for 10 amps, in which case you still connect your DC source and then just select the 10 amps. Now the direction in out, what does that mean? Well, it was very easy for us to incorporate into the design of the DC, DC charger a reverse direction. So normally you're charging via your alternator, via your start battery. But what if you had a flat battery? What if you um, were in the middle of nowhere, you had a flat starter battery? Well, you could use this battery to reverse charge the starter battery under the bonnet. 
So by selecting out, you're now actually using the battery to charge the starter battery at whatever amperage you've selected here. So in this case, you're charging the start battery at 10 amps or 20 amps. This is a very useful feature. You might not use it very often, but in the circumstance where you have a flat battery, this is priceless to have this feature built in. External shunt. That means if you uh, connected an external shunt over the two negative terminals to measure amps in and out or current in and out to get an accurate state of charge reading of the battery. If you had something connected, you would select, yes, I have an external shunt. In most cases, you won't. So you just select no. Now let's talk about the VSR or volt sensing relay. You'll see here we have VSR adjustment and VSR status light. So the status light is green LED and the VSR adjustment is a what's called a trim pot which you would need a small Phillips head screwdriver to turn clockwise or anti-clockwise. Trim pot is an um, abbreviation for trimming the potentiometer. All this really is, is a variable resistor or, or a potentiometer. So when you're trimming the pot, you're turning the um, trim pot, pot uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise to optimize the voltage that the DC, DC charger kicks in at. So why would you need to adjust that at all? Well, let's say the battery is in the back of a ute or four wheel drive, several meters away from the start battery. And let's say you've got appropriately sized cable, in which case, once you connect the positive and negative and you turn on the car engine, the green LED light should illuminate at 13.3 volts or roundabouts. But let's say the cable is slightly undersized and so you've lost too much voltage between the engine and the battery. When you turn the car engine on, the green LED might not illuminate at all. In which case, you would then perforate the clear plastic film, get your small Phillips head screwdriver, and adjust the trim pot until the green LED starts to illuminate. So you're adjusting the variable resistor until you reach a voltage that starts to charge the battery via the charger. That's all we're really doing. Once you've done that and you've set it, then it's set and forget. You should never have to touch this ever again. If you do perforate the film, just remember, maybe get some clear sellotape and just put it over there just to protect from any ingress of moisture or dust. So that's the VSR or volt sensing relay. Thanks for watching this video on the 12 volt, 110 amp hour SP or standard power lithium battery from LBS. Remember, this battery is only 12 kilos compared to over 30 kilos for an equivalent size 100 amp lead acid. It's a smaller footprint and it's got a metal enclosure which helps with mechanical protection, particularly in applications uh, which are moving vehicles, so recreational vehicles, four-wheel drives as a dual battery system in the back of the ute or four-wheel drive, or even in marine applications. Being 12 kilos, it's also perfect for camping applications. Take down the beach with your fishing for um, an alternate power source, or keep in the tent to power your DC applications or run off an inverter to power your AC applications. So consider this battery as a replacement for your typically 100 amp hour size lead acid battery.